sorry. <laughs> and let us start with the talk. The first speaker is Professor Nere Enrion from Weinstein Institute for Applied Analysis and Stochastics in Germany. And it is my pleasure. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to thank the organizers of this seminar. For their kind invitation to come here to Elche to start an interesting cooperation and also to present a talk here at this nice meeting. So, this is a joint talk with my Czech colleague Jerzy Utrata and Lukas Adam from Prague, and it's on calmness as a constraint qualification for MPEX, which means mathematical programs with equilibrium constraints. Before going into the details of the talk, I have to recall a few basic concepts which most of you might be familiar with. The first one is uh, the Modukovic normal cone and co-derivative to closed sets or set-valued mapping, mappings. So the formal definition of this normal cone is written down here, but maybe it's easier to illustrate it uh, for such a picture where, where we are given a closed set C with these three st strata and we want to calculate this or define this normal cone at, a, at an element x bar belonging to this set C. And what we have to do is we have to calculate the Frechet normal cones in a neighborhood of, of x bar and to aggregate all uh, cluster points um, uh, from such Frechet normal elements when moving with the argument x to x bar. So in the beginning we have to consider x bar itself, the stationary sequence uh, uh, x uh, identical to x bar. Then we see the, the contingent cone to C is something like this set here and we dualize it and get the Frechet normal cone which is uh, illustrated here by this uh, triangle. Of course it's a cone unbounded, I cannot illustrate an unbounded set. But apart from this Frechet normal cone at x bar itself, we have also to consider sequences xn moving to x bar and belonging to the set C. And in these uh, uh, elements xn, we have to again to calculate the Frechet normal cones, which is very easy here because these are smooth uh, curves. So it's just the uh, normal, normal space in the sense of classical analysis, this red uh, uh, a straight line which you can he see here and when we move with xn to x bar this red line uh, moves and uh, in the limit we get this, uh, this red line uh, illustrated here on the right hand side. And similar for the other strata, strata we get the blue, the blue line and the green line and the union of all these pieces makes up the Modrhovic normal cone at x bar to this particular set C. And once we are given a normal cone, you are fully aware of, we, we can define uh, many other interesting uh, objects of non-smooth analysis like subdifferentials or uh, more generally co-derivatives. So this concept of a normal cone allows us to derive a general multifunction phi from say here in finite spaces, finite dimensional spaces from Rn and into Rm. And we fix an element of the graph of this multifunction and then the co-derivative uh, to phi at this fixed element of the graph uh, applied to an argument y star consists of all elements x star in the dual of the x space such that this couple x star minus y star belongs to the normal cone Modrhovic normal cone to the graph of phi. So once we have de defined the normal cone to a closed set, we can uh, define this co-derivative. Okay, this is just a reminder. And the second, uh, um, second uh, group of concepts I have to introduce are certain Lipschitz properties, which of course I know many of you are familiar with. The first one is the so-called Aubin property of a, of a multifunction between metric spaces. The formal definition is given here. Again, we have to fix a point x bar y bar of the graph and uh, this multifunction is set to satisfy the, the Aubin property. Whenever I can estimate the excess of one of the images 
over another image of the multifunction for arguments x1, x2 close to the fixed x bar in such a Lipschitzian way. And then um, it turns out for many purposes, uh, classically when, when used the Aubin property as a, as a sufficient condition, but it turns out for many purposes, purposes it is uh, sufficient to uh, work with the weaker property, the so-called calmness. And calmness comes in, in a natural way from the Aubin property. If you fix one of these two argument, arguments uh, uh, as the nominal point x bar. So you just compare the ex excess of uh, one perturbed image of the multifunction over the nominal image. Which is a, and, and again, you ask for such a Lipschitz behavior, locally, local Lipschitz behavior. And this is, a, of, of course, a much weaker property. Now I want to come to the topic of the talk, the so-called MPEX mathematical programs with equilibrium constraints uh, with smooth data. And uh, I've uh, uh, given here the general form of such an MPEG. MPEG. Um, we have to minimize a smooth objective phi depending on two uh, variables, everything in finite dimension here, x and y, subject to a particular constraint set. This constraint set is not a constraint set as in nonlinear programming, so it's not defined by um, equalities and inequalities, but it, is, uh, it represents itself the solution, possible solution to another mm, optimization problem or more generally a generalized equation. It means uh, x and y are defined to be feasible if zero be belongs to this uh, image of a, of a smooth um, um, single valued mapping f plus a normal cone to some closed subset gamma. Of course you can imagine uh, this to represent the solution, the solution set of the so-called lower level optimization problem, then the capital F would just be the gradient of some, of some other objective function to be minimized over this um, uh, closed set gamma. But it does not have to be uh, a, a solution of an optimization problem, it can be a slightly more general thing. And um, the problem with these MPEGs is that unlike usual uh, nonlinear optimization problems, uh, the classical um, constraint qualifications are violated. Because this is, not, this is not a regular constraint set, it's a solution set. And typically uh, constraint qualifications like linear independence or Mangazai and Fromovitz, they are um, definitely violated for these constraints. So uh, you cannot simply apply karush kuntaka uh, is, um, conditions to that kind of problems. And the question is how could you characterize um, local solutions of such MPEGs. And uh, one possibility is to derive so-called M-stationarity conditions, um, dual optimality conditions, but uh, we have to find a, an appropriate constraint qualification. And an appropriate constraint qualification in this con context uh, is the following. We consider this generalized equation, but now uh, in a parametric manner. So the left-hand side is perturbed by a parameter p. And to each p, or with each p, we associate, associate the solution of this perturbed generalized equation. So it is a multifunction. And our constraint qual qualification consists now in uh, requiring that this multifunction be calm at a, at a um, point of its graph. That means at a nominal parameter zero and uh, a, a couple x bar, y bar satisfying this original uh, generalized equation. And if we are able to check this property, this constraint qualification, then indeed we can derive uh, dual stationarity uh, conditions, so necessary optimality conditions for such problems. And this has been done first in a well-known paper by Jane Ye yeah, and yeah, by Ye yeah and Ye, yeah, I don't know the first name of this of the second, yeah. 
And uh, here you see this, you end up with the existence of, a, if x bar y bar is a sol local solution to this NPEG, you can derive under this constraint qualification the existence of such a so-called NPEG multiplier such that this uh, equation is satisfied and such an inclusion is satisfied. Everything here is in terms of the original data. The only thing which uh, looks a bit um, unusual is this co-derivative to the normal cone mapping to the set gamma. So if you, if you want to derive uh, stationarity conditions for MPEX in, in this way, there are many other ways to do it, then you are faced with two problems. First problem, check the calmness of this per perturbation mapping and second problem, compute the co-derivative, make it explicit in terms of the original data. Uh, I will not talk about this second part here. I just want to refer to a certain well-known um, results where we have fully explicit formula for this co-derivative. So for instance, if, if the set gamma here is given uh, by a finite number of C2 inequalities as in nonlinear uh, uh, programming, as, as, as we encountered in nonlinear programming problem, then we have a fully explicit uh, formula for the co-derivative. Um, another instance is a polyhedral set gamma or gamma uh, as a Lorentz cone. So in all, in all these cases, uh, you may end up at fully explicit stationarity conditions. Therefore, I want to focus in, in my talk now to the verification of the calmness of this multifunction. But before I do it, I will introduce another MPEG, which basically is uh, the same as the first one, but comes uh, in a different form, in a different disguise. So f now, and for the rest of my talk, I assume that this uh, set gamma appearing here is given by a finite number of C2 uh, inequalities. And here again is our original MPEG. But for such a specific uh, type, or, and of course I, I will, I will um, require that uh, this inequality system satisfies the Mangasian form of its constraint qualification, which certainly is well known. And uh, if this is the case, then of course we can explicitly uh, dis describe the normal cone to gamma. Because we know as in karsh kuntaka uh, conditions, uh, an element of the normal cone may be described as such a, as such a linear combination of, of active gradients and the activity of gradients you can express them by, by means of these complementarity uh, constraints here. So uh, an element of n gamma uh, uh, may be represented uh, by, by, by this expression here for some non-negative multiplier uh, g of y has to be um, less than b zero because y belongs to gamma and you have these complementarity constraints. And uh, if, you, if you rewrite all these relations in a more compact form, you can do it like here. Here we have a single valued mapping, mapping with two components, first component, second component and a normal cone to some other set. It's no longer gamma, it's a simpler set. And if you read off the first component, it just means uh, this first element here should belong to the normal cone to Rm, which is zero. So we, we recover this equation here. And the second component uh, means g of y has to belong to normal con cone uh, at Rq plus, and this provides exactly the other relations. So what have we, what have we done so f uh, here? Um, we minimize again the same objective function and implicitly we add lambda as a new variable, as, as a third variable here. So the existence of lambda is uh, hidden in, in, taking, in considering lambda as an additional variable now. And uh, this problem is exactly of the same form as the original one. Again, we are given a single valued mapping here, generalized equation with a single valued map mapping and a normal cone to some other set. So what we could do now is we could reapply the same theorem which we had before to this new form of the, of the MPEG. And, uh, first, uh, we have to uh, um, be, become aware of one uh, um, well-known result. Whenever x bar y bar is a local solution of this MPEG, then for any multiplier, 
belo belonging to this associated multiplier set. You, you recall, uh, due to MFCQ, Manga Zion Fromovitz constraint qualification, the multiplier does not have to be unique, but it uh, has to belong to some uh, bounded polyhedron. In general, this is a whole set here. So for any associated multiplier, this triplet x bar, y bar, lambda bar will be a solution of, of this one. So we can reapply the previous theorem to a solution of the new MPEG. And uh, the theorem, as you remember, came with a, with a, a constraint qualification in terms of calmness of a perturbed generalized equation. And I've written down the new perturbed generalized equation here. And if this, is, uh, if, if this holds true, then we can derive, as before, the existence of MPEG multipliers and, and so on and make everything explicit here. These are the stationarity conditions. It turns out it is exactly the same form of stationarity conditions as we had in the beginning if we would make explicit the co-derivative. So I do not compare the stationarity conditions of the two theorems, but I want to pose the question what is the difference between the two constraint qualifications? Because both of them lead to the same result. So it sh uh, sh should be interesting to know, is, is it simpler to check one of them or the other, uh, and, and so on. S and and, and uh, to summarize what we have done so far is, we had two constraint qualifications associated with this uh, original MPEG. One was the calmness of the pertur perturbation mapping to this generalized uh, equation without multipliers. And the second one is the calmness uh, of, again, of a perturbed um, a generalized equation, but with two components. So the perturbation parameters consist of P1 and P2. It's a different, it's a different property. And what we need in order to, to apply the second result is calmness for some lambda, for some lambda. It's sufficient. Because given a solution of this one, we know any lambda belonging to the multiplier set is a solution of the other MPEG. And it, it is sufficient for us, for us to have calmness for some lambda in order to derive the uh, ne uh, necessary optimality conditions. Now, what is the relation between these two calmness properties? First, we have the calmness of M tilde, the enhanced um, perturbation mapping for all multipliers from this multiplier set uh, implies the calmness of the original perturbation mapping. So if I'm able to check calmness of M tilde for all lambda, then I end up at calmness of M. But this may be a difficult uh, task to check it for all lambda. Uh, interestingly, the converse of this statement is not true. So you may have calmness of M, but it may turn out that calmness of M tilde is violated for some lambda. But it's even worse. You may have an example where calmness of M is satisfied and calmness of M tilde is violated for all lambda, for any lambda. So it's a really a strong counterexample and my colleague Lukas Adam was very, <laughs> was, was, it took him a lot of time to find such a sophisticated counterexample. But if you strengthen the constraint qualification for this set gamma here, if you require linear independence, then it turns out that both calmness properties uh, are the same. Okay, let me now provide some instances where, where we can really check the calmness of these two in independent fashions. The first uh, theorem relates to the verification of calmness of this enhanced perturbation mapping. And uh, it turns out you can verify this calmness under two conditions. The first condition is an algebraic uh, relation or a system of relations which you can ex uh, verify explicitly in terms, in terms of the original data of the problem. It means the following, whenever you have vectors A and C satisfying this set of relations here. Here you have the co-derivative, but this can be calculated explicitly as an explicit formula for it, for it. Whenever A and C satisfy these relations, the A part should reduce to zero. That's an, an, a well-known um, constraint qualification, non-normal multiplier constraint qualification introduced by Jane Yeh, where it is required that also the C is zero. But we do not insist on it. It's sufficient to have the A0. It's a weaker property uh, 
uh, as long as these uh, gradients are not linearly independent. Okay, you can check it, it's not such a problem. And this, but you have to add something, and what you have to add is a, another calmness property, an easier one associated with a certain system of equalities and inequalities. And wh what do we have to do? Uh, here we, we fix some lambda in the multiplier set. We want to check calmness for this particular lambda. Now with this lambda we associate those indices for which lambda is strictly larger than zero. Because uh, you may have multipliers where maybe all components are larger than zero or some components are larger than zero or uh, all are zero. Here you fix the positive components. And uh, then what you are doing is, f uh, from you, you do not consider the original inequality system, uh, the whole inequality system, but you split it into two parts, in an equality system and an uh, inequality system. And the equalities are ident identified by, by those indices for which the multiplier was strictly larger than zero. And you perturb this uh, system of equalities and inequalities and you, you insist on that this mapping is calm at the nominal point. If you are able to check it, these two conditions, then you know the entilda will be calm. And I want to illustrate this theorem for a simple example. Let us take as a single valued mapping this constant uh, mapping. Uh, uh, f uh, identical to the vector 0, 1 and the set gamma is described by two inequalities in, in, in R2. So everything which is larger than 0 and everything which is larger than uh, y1 squared. So evidently uh, the second inequality is redundant at, at the point. So we don't have linear independence constraint qualification but we, but we do have Mangasayan Formowitz constraint qualification. Now, due to the presence of two linearly dependent uh, active constraint vectors, we are faced with a multiplier set. And in this case, it is exactly the, the set of uh, uh, the line segment joining the two canonical vectors in, in R2. All these multipliers uh, um, are possible. And let us assume that we want to check the calmness of our enhanced perturbation mapping at lambda 1, at, at, uh, excuse me, at, at this point here. What do we have to do? We first have to check this, this set of relations. I don't have the time to do it, but it can be done easily. It, it turns out it is satisfied for this specific multiplier lambda. But then we, we still have to check this calmness property here. Now, uh, our multiplier has positive first component and zero second component, excuse me, zero second component, and, and this means we have to consider the first inequality as an equality and the second one uh, to, keep as, uh, to keep as an inequality. So the first one gives the epigraph of this parabola, but this time I, I do not put these uh, small dashes here because it's an equality, and the second one we keep it as an, as an inequality. And now we have to, we, we may perturb this, this system. Perturbing means I can move uh, vertically uh, uh, this parabola or this hyperplane and have to check how the, how the feasible set changes. But uh, it is evidently calm because n no matter how you uh, perturb the set here, uh, it, the, the intersection in, in, the, in the nominal situation is just this graph of the parabola. And if you perturb it, then you it, it remains either the parabola or it, you cut off certain pieces, it, it becomes smaller. So it, it does not contradict the calmness. Calmness is an upper semi-continuity property. So this is calm and we are able to check both conditions and we derive the calmness of the enhanced perturbation mapping at this multiplier. Um, but then there are other multipliers. We co could switch to this uh, second one and uh, it turns out uh, in, in, uh, for the second one, uh, this mapping is not calm. Now we, we change the role of equality and inequality because now the second component is positive and the first is zero. It means we keep the second inequality as an, uh, yeah, as an equality and take, take the first one as, a, as an inequality. And now if you, if you perturb, 
you see the nominal point here is just the origin, but now if you, if you shift or lift this equality, then you get new feasible points which are far in the sense that their distance to the origin grows like a square root. It's no longer Lipschitzian behavior. So this calmness is not satisfied. We cannot apply our theorem and indeed the, the enhanced perturbation mapping turns out by elementary calculus not to be calm. But then there is still yet another situation where you have multipliers with both components uh, being positive. And again, you can easily check, you have two equations now to, to be perturbed, it is not calm. So you cannot apply the theorem, but uh, yet the, the enhanced uh, perturbation mapping is calm. So the theorem is just a sufficient condition. It, it does not cover all the cases. And uh, this, let me just um, briefly mention it. Uh, it may be a tedious job to, to check all these uh, calmness uh, properties of subsystems in a, in a particular problem. But there is a simple instance where you can skip this job. And this is uh, associated with the so-called constant rank uh, uh, constraint qualification, which you certainly know. I do not go into the details of this slide. All I want to say is whenever the constant rank constraint qualification is satisfied, then all these mappings are automatically calm. So for instance, in the, in the linear case, if the gamma is a polyhedron, you don't have to check these calmnesses. They are for free, of course. It also comes as a consequence of Robinson's uh, theorem. Um, and now in, 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 on, on my last two slides, uh, let me go to the verification of calmness of the original uh, perturbed um, constraint mapping M. So this is multiplier free form, the original perturbation mapping. What, what do we know? How could we check calmness? First we could use the stronger Aubin property. And there are good criteria, Mordechovic criterion for instance, to check the Aubin property uh, for such a system. But as I mentioned, it may be too strong. It may be violated in many interesting cases. Another instance is uh, the polyhedral case. If gamma is a polyhedron and F is an, a fine linear mapping, then the graph of this multifunction is a polyhedral multifunction and calmness comes for free. But again, this is a quite specific situation to have this uh, complete linear world here. And uh, one, one uh, question you can pose is, uh, are there possibilities to somehow mix these two properties so they are, that they are partially satisfied for one part and, uh, and for the other part? And the technical working horse to do so is, a, is an interesting theorem by Klatte and Kummer, which is a result on the calmness of intersections of two multifunctions. So this does not come for free. In general, the intersection of two, mul of two calm multifunctions will not be calm. But if you add something, so of course you, you require that both of them be calm, but then you still have to add two, two other properties, and then you can derive the calmness of the intersection. And if I apply this abstract result to, to intersection of partial uh, calmness properties, so to one, one part of the mapping having this property and the other part of the mapping having this property, then I end up at the following corollary. Assume that our MPEG or the generalized equation in the MPEG is structured. So on the one hand we have a polyhedral set gamma here, but on the other hand we do not insist on um, complete uh, linearity of the mapping here. We just say part of it is linear, a fine linear, and another part has a, has a, a subjective partial Jacobian. And this somehow reflects the Aubin property. This would uh, uh, refer to Robinson's theorem. So we mix two parts and end up at a structure which, which, which may be not completely um, um, polyhedral or linear and maybe not uh, require a complete subjectivity, a complete Aubin property. And uh, this can be used to, identifies, to I identify a whole class of, uh, for instance, bi-level problems where you uh, get the calmness for free. And this class is uh, indicated here. We minimize an upper level objective function and the lower level objective function uh, uh, is required to have a specific form. We uh, split the variable y into a yA part and a yB part. The yB part is a, is a, quadratic, uh, is a quadratic function of y 
uh, this quadratic function, and the, the yA part is a linear function plus an arbitrary smooth function. So we have a lot of degree of freedom here. Whereas gamma is supposed to be a polyhedron. And then it turns out for this whole class of functions, uh, you get the calmness due to the previous result and you can immediately write down the stationarity conditions, the necessary optimality conditions of the problem. And it turns out that this class is not, not artificial, but we encountered this class in identifying equilibria in electricity spot market problems. And then exactly this structure appeared and uh, it was possible to apply this result. So with this I would like very much to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Is there any question or comment? Yeah, I would like to, to mm -hmm. ask uh, just a, a small question. Uh, here uh, you uh, point out that uh, there is a possibility of uh, considering, let's say, intermediate uh, yes. conditions between yeah. open property and yes. harmless property. Do you think uh, that it is uh, worthy to study, uh, for example, a liquid lower semi-continuity or when it happens together with calmness in our case, because uh, this is one project we have sometimes in, in mind. <coughs> so actually, um, we do not um, introduce a new, new property. So we do not, uh, what, what I presented here is not studying a property between Aubin property and, and uh, polyhedrality, but rather we apply a, res uh, a structured calmness, calmness result where you may mix both, where you may have parts of the problem satisfying one property and another part of the problem satisfying another property. And uh, under, th under this uh, structure, we are able to derive the calmness, but we do not um, we do not invent, say, a new property between calmness and Aubin property. It's more the structure of the problem where, where you can may, may be lucky to identify, okay, this has a nice property but not the whole problem. And here it has a nice other property but it's not true for the whole problem. And now can I combine the two in, in the structure to get the calmness? This is like, it is like that. Okay, in, uh, uh, in this list of conditions, you, uh, the, the second one says that uh, the T2 must be calm. Yes. And uh, the, the inverse yes. I mean, uh, has uh, yes. enjoyed the uh, over. Yeah. Okay, uh, we start of mapping this one. Uh, it turns out, it, it turns out this, this third property is usually the, the automatically satisfied because it amounts more or less to the property of the single valued mapping which is Lipschitz because it is uh, differentiable and so on. So this part fortunately is almost trivial in, when checking this. The, the hard part are these two calmnesses and then this is, you, you see this is not an intersection of full mappings but it's an intersection of the first one with the, uh, uh, of the second one with the first one fixed. Uh, here you just have an, Im an image and this may be hard. To, to verify. But th that one, it, it usually uh, amounts to, 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 to checking the, the calmness of a, of a differentiable mapping, which is automatic, uh, the Aubin property, because it's, it's Lipschitz continuous, single valued mapping. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>